I think we'll get a lot of donations on Saturday on the at the beach. If this weather's like this. And there's a lot of people on the beach. They're feeling good, aren't they? Just let Luna off, she ain't going anywhere. She'll stay with us. Right, let's have a look. Yeah, well, here we are. Jane's brought us up to the heart of the mine. If you look up there, that's, you know, some that's lovely. I thought it was a castle when I first looked at it from a distance. But now that the old mining works. So let's have a look what it says. This is the section through an engine house and pump uh, shaft indicating the scale and complexity of what went on inside the engine house and the shaft below. I love old uh, houses like this. Then we've got, oh, there's a boiler house steam driven with the equipment. All the engines houses had attached boiler houses and at Piva only small sections remain. This is the pump engine house, the low walls surrounding the east face in elevation are all that are left. This originally had two arch doorways to mark the entrance, only one of which survives, providing a suitably imposing entrance to the wheel Piva, a pumping engine house. The flue to the right of the boiler house arches runs diagonally towards the base of the chimney and the two elongated depressions in the ground indicate the position of two large boilers sited here to produce steam for the engine and other equipment. This included a Hilbert compressor providing air for underground drilling which was located on the plinth to the east of the boiler house. That's uh, fascinating. Yeah. Before the mining could take any place at all at depth, groundwater had to be removed. The pumping engine house was the pride of the mine. Its huge beam engine usually working day and night to keep the mine clear of water. From 1872, the mine had a 60 inch single acting beam engine to power the pumps, which extracted water from deep below the surface. An unusual feature of this engine was the use of a cast iron lattice beam in place of the usual plate beam. The hallmark of a few engines built by Harvey and Co of Hale in the 1830s. The beam of the 72 inch engine at Hammersmith pumping station latticed like wheel peavers, although bigger. This is now preserved at the Kew Bridge Steam Museum in London. Well, that's fascinating. Oh, the engine sizes, I'll just give you that. Given in inches, re refer to the diameter of the engine cylinder. So a 28 inch 0.7 met meter engine is big and a 70 inch six meter engine is absolutely enormous so that must be a sight to see so we're going to go on our little walk around here and have a look what else we can see anybody interested in engines will be fascinated with that i mean a 70 inch engine that is enormous isn't it come on then let's go follow the truck there's a PDSA bucket on Saturday. We're going to hit the beach. Hopefully the weather's good and there's lots of people and they want to donate to the PDSA appeal. That'd be great. That's the whole point. That's what the buckets are doing on there. Yeah, well, you could... Can we go inside? Yeah. Um, Should I just... Yeah, I would. If you go in and have a film, give me Luna. And uh, in fact, no good you buying one.
a spare one. Long. Yeah, but it might not pick up this distance. Oh, yeah. It's amazing how you see it. But there he is, look, there he is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can't go in, obviously. Yeah, it's a bit like a castle. Yeah. Come on then. Come out, Sky Skyler. That's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm stuck. Yeah, I'm stuck. You know what? Like, I'm going to try and caramel's nose. What the hell? Luna's being quiet now. Oh. Blimey, it was. It's quite big, isn't it? Straight down, Jane, yeah? She's a lovely wall. But it's ideal for the Skylar and Tower landmark. Yeah. Yeah, it's a um, good path. Does caramel um does caramel stop and sniff at things all the time? That's why we started off. Huh. Come on then. <laughs> 